What's up everybody, Liam Klisham back finally for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over how to use Houdini and MOPS motion operators to transition between two materials. So if you've ever seen my old Cinema 4D tutorial about vertex maps and using a vertex map to, tra to transition between materials inside Cinema 4D, this is very similar to that. Um, I'm not going to go over how to install MOPS. You can figure out how to do that. I'll put a link below in the description of how to go download MOPS, but this is really a, a tutorial on how to use MOPS and get going with a cool transition effect. With all that said, let's jump into it. So inside Houdini here, I've got a fresh scene. The only thing that I have made ahead of time is this material, which I'll go over when it's time to apply the material. Um, I just wanted to bring it in and have it pre-built because uh, it's got some textures and things in here that you don't really need to watch me go through and bring it in. So let's go back out of that. So inside our network view and our object, we're gonna just drop in a platonic, nice and simple go inside here and I'm gonna go ahead and rename this just to base just in case we do anything else fancy but I don't think we're gonna to get too fancy with this and our solid type is gonna be an icosahedron and the first thing we're gonna to do to this is subdivide it just to make sure that our transition is a little bit smoother so go ahead and drop down a subdivide stop click on that and I think two should be good. We might need to go up from there. We can always go back, of course, everything being procedural. And the next thing we're gonna do is start using mops. So as I said in the beginning, I'm not going over how to install mops or general Houdini things. I am assuming that you know how to get mops. If you have questions about it, leave a comment below and I can help you walk through it. There will be a link as well where to find mops. So there's a lot of things in here that you'll recognize from Cinema 4D if you're coming over from there, mostly being falloffs, uh, generators, you can do instances, which is a little bit like cloning, modifiers to things, delays, flocking, curl modifier, and tools, how to uh, extract attributes, and noise patterns, things like that. We're mostly going to be focusing on falloffs for now. And I'm going to go ahead and just start with a simple shape fall off. If we hook that up, you'll see when I turn this on that if I rotate, it looks like a plane effector from Cinema 4D if you're used to that. So very similar, um, but not really helpful at the moment. You know, it's not really doing anything to our object. We can't see how it's affecting things. And coming over to our shape fall off attributes, you'll see that we have preview fall off right there. And this is where we're gonna to start to be able to have some fun and some control and do some really cool stuff. So you'll see right here, we have a heat map, black body and infrared, but you can really change it to whatever you want. And then based on where your fall off shape is, it will pick up on these colors, much like you're probably used to with some of 40 and its new uh, fields system. So let's go ahead and scale this down so you can see right there, get a lot of control. I generally, as an artist, like to think in black and white terms. So the fastest way to get there is through black body and just pull these two out. And then we can start to transition things and see going from white as on and black as off. For this particular effect that I showed in the beginning, I actually ended up using a spherical right here, and that's going to be really our source for where our animation is going to start. And we need to move that into position. So I'm going to go ahead and go down on the Y a little bit, put it down here. That's probably too big to start and scale this down a little bit. Might have to go up a little bit more too. Probably still a little big, something like right in there. If I move this up and down, you'll see not really do anything, not going to create the effect that we want. We're not getting any of this like cool noisy transition. And something in MOPS that's really cool and was added in pretty recently is the spread fall off. And what it's going to do is take a source and use that to spread your transition or this fall off across your object. So if I go ahead and throw in a spread, connect this up, Turn it on. You'll see we've got 
our start points that we can select where we want the growth to start. We can also do a point cloud, which is from the second input in here, and then an attribute, which we will end up using here. So this attribute mops falloff is actually generated from this very first shape here. If we middle click on this, you'll see right in here we have mops falloff, and we're gonna be using that in here. So our falloff right now is starting right there. As I said before, you can also get fancy and do point selections and groups, um, really have a lot of control over this. But for this particular effect, we're gonna just use the fall off shape here. So let's take a look at animate. Uh, this is where we're gonna control most of our stuff. So um, right in here is a reference image, or a reference frame, excuse me, and it's just referencing the frames in case something changes in there. This is a search radius if you want it tighter max connections, so how many points out it's connected to, the spread, which I'll get that going in a second, and then the fall off as well. There's also noise attributes in here and a way to remap this. And I don't have it installed yet, but uh, in the newest version of Mops, there's even more options that you can add and subtract with blend modes too, like you can up here with all the other fall offs. Um, so that way, if you want to subtract a spread from another fall off or add it to another fall off, you can start getting really fancy. Um, for this, we're just going to keep it nice and simple. And I'm going to turn on preview fall off so we can see what's happening. So let's go ahead and go back into our animate. Um, as you can see in here, we're starting at this purple right there. And then we can grow up into the white there. And that's how we get our cool transition. And you can see right now, you know, it's got a little bit of chunkiness to it and noise, um, but I want some more. I, I want to get pretty heavy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the noise here, and you can see that it's not very smooth yet. So let's go back into our subdivisions, go up to like four, and now we can start to see some detailing in the, the fall off there. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to black and white like I like. There we go. So everywhere that's white will be the second material that we transition into, and a little bit of that displacement that I showed in the, the preview, and everything black will be our first material. So, so far, this is pretty much all we have to do to get going with this fancy transition. I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and adjust some of these parameters. Um, we don't really need to adjust the search, max connections, you can see, what it does there now that I have preview on, it makes it a little bit chunkier based on the connections. You can also do like 50 and have lots of connections. There's also connectivity, and which is a simplified version. But um, I think we'll just connect, stay with radius for now. So we're gonna go ahead and come down, bring our spread down and set a keyframe here. And then, hmm. Let's say by frame 96, we want to be done with this. So right about there. I'm just going to round up to 1.5 to make sure that we really get there. And now if I come back and play, transitions. Since we're only going to frame 96, we can go ahead and just set our global animation settings to 120. We'll just have a little bit of buffer there at the end. So now when we play back, we're not waiting. And go ahead and turn this on in real time. That's what it looks like with the 96 frames of animation. All right, so that's all well and good, but let's do something with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw a UV project on here. Something that Redshift really likes is to have UV coordinates and then throw a uh, material sop on the end down here. And since I already have this transition built, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this right up here into the material and we'll start working with that. So let's take a look at this. Right here, this first material, this base one that we've got going on, uh, is from the Grayscale Gorilla material pack. It's just a leather. And then this second one, I think, is just some plastic with some emission. Yep, sorry. Had to think about what I actually did there, <laughs> that first one. And then down here, I have some displacement. Uh, being generated by noise, which we will also control through the transition. Um, so really simple setup, just diffuse, roughness map, normal map, plugged into the space one. Second material here in this first layer that we're gonna 
blend between, and then again, displacement and noise. So what we need to do is reference this mops fall off attribute. And that's really simple to do in Redshift. We can come in here, hit tab, and just do uh, user data or data to get all of our data options. And this one is gonna be a color data. So go ahead, bring this in here. By default, it is set to UV tangents. I'm gonna go ahead and put mops fall off right there. And for giggles, why don't we just go ahead and throw that out as our surface. And then down here, uh, normally you might have uh, a geometry spreadsheet or other tabs down here. This is where I like to dock my Redshift render view. And if you need to get to that, you can just right click on the tab that you've got here. Uh, if it's geometry spreadsheet, it will be like that. You can go ahead and change that to render view. I'm gonna pull this up a bit, change this to fit to window, go back up to my object level, really quickly add in the Redshift shelf right there and hit this Redshift button. And the reason I did that is because if I go to out now, it now added in these two ROPs, uh, the, the Redshift ROP and then the IPR ROP as well. And that way it runs smoothly. And the last thing I need to do is add in a camera. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit control click on that camera. That way it sets it to where we already are. I'm gonna lock this into position and just move over a little bit so we can view this up a little bit better. Um, and maybe I should throw in, I guess a dome light will be fine. So we'll do a search for RS light dome. And let's see, do I have one that's already in here? Yeah, it looks like I already have one. Perfect, we don't need the background. And let's go ahead and hit play on our render view. Right now it's just gonna load up everything really quickly, but we'll very soon see what we've got going on. So you can see now, if we go back to our material that we are now picking this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the beginning here. See it's black. And if I hit refresh again, we can see our transition happening in there. So that's perfect. We know that we are getting the data in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to mops fall off. And let's hook back our surface. And right now it's probably getting confused because we've got this base in here, which really quickly I'll show you what that is. Uh, this is that leather, and then we've got this second one, which is this blue emission. So it's getting confused because it doesn't know what to do with this information. We'll go ahead and just pipe this into our layer one and blend color. So now as it animates through, it'll pick up this attribute and transition between these. If you've seen any of my C4D tutorials on Redshift, this is very much like using a vertex map in Cinema 4D to blend between these things. So if I go back a little bit here and hit that, you can see now we're starting to get that blue coming in and we're transitioning even more so and going up. So the nice thing that we can do too is also control our displacement with this. I didn't really want any displacement on the leather, but I do want displacement on this blue color that's coming in, the secondary color that we're transitioning to. And the way I've got this set up is um, we've got this redshift noise, throw that in here, just as our displacement. So everywhere it's white, it'll displace. Everywhere it's black and gray, it will be less so. Um, you can see my other tutorials about displacement and how to set that up properly. But um, to be able to control it, we need to multiply our noise with this fall off. So, if we're thinking in, in math terms, everything that's being multiplied by black or zero won't show up or be multiplied, and everything that is being multiplied by one will begin to show up, and everything in between. It's a float, so if you're multiplying by, say, 0.1 of a color, then 0.1 of this noise will start to come through. And we can see that if we take this math and hook it up there, that this noise is starting to come through here and it's still black up there. So we know that's working too, which is great. So go ahead and disconnect that and I'm gonna go ahead and reattach that. And you'll see that our displacement isn't showing up at all. And just like in Cinema 4D, where you have to tell Redshift to start using displacement, we have to do that here in Houdini as well. So I'm gonna come up to my object level, select the platonic and come over to this Redshift object tab and then tessellation and displacement. I'm going to enable tessellation just so we get a little bit more subdivision going on. 
and then also enable displacement. And that way it's really got enough polygons and divisions to work with to, to make this look like something. So now, if we go back towards the beginning, you can see that we've got that leather, and then it starts to pop out here, and then grow on like that there. So really simple. Things that could take a really long time setting up attribute transfers and trying to subtract or multiply those transfers together and getting into VEX and VOPs is really easy with the MOPS tools. Um, so to finish this off, let's go ahead and come down here. That's looking really blown out. We can probably do something with this material to make it not so much. Um, maybe we can bring up this a little bit more. I'm thinking what may help it the best is just a little bit of ambient occlusion. So I'm going to bring that in here and go to overall, emission color, and let's go ahead and bring this back a bit. And it's not liking that. Hmm. Sample environment. There we go. Sample environment will be a little bit better. And spread that out a little bit more. Don't really want white as our bright, kind of with the blue, and then the dark, and make like a dark blue, maybe even darker. And that way we still have some details of the, the displacement in there. Let's see if I can get a little bit more control with this. There we go, getting a little bit darker in there. And come back, I think this might be a little bit strong, maybe in here have like a little bit of purple underneath. And we can keep playing with this all day. But we are at our final point now. So in the beginning here, we've got this black leather. I'll turn up our dome light just a little bit. Maybe set our exposure to one. And then we come forward a little bit, hit reload. You can see that growth in there. Then we transition and turn into that. The other nice thing that you can do, and if you go to my Instagram page, you'll see, um, you can also control things like particle emission with the same fall off attribute. Um, anything that you can really think of of activating something or transitioning between something can be used with this method. All right, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It was really cool for me to figure out a very easy way to replicate the vertex transfer inside of Cinema 4D, now inside of Houdini using MOPS. If you guys ever have questions about anything, leave me a comment below. You can always find me on social media at 531, or you can email me liam at 5, the word 5, spelled out, hyphen 31.com. All right, I look forward to the next tutorial, and I'll talk to you soon.